Xiphos, forging the Greek hoplite sword. Hi there, I'm Thak from Thak Ironworks. Welcome to our latest video. Uh, today we are forging a sword. I haven't done that in a little while, so this will be fun. Um, and I am making the Xiphos or Xiphos. I'm not really sure how you're supposed to pronounce that, but it's the Greek hoplite sword. And I have, let's start with a picture, shall we? I'm probably gonna screw up our light balance here. Okay, so I've drawn up a template of the uh, profile, the overall shape of the sword here. So I've got it um, with a nice little leaf blade on there. I forget how long it is, about 24 inches long in the blade. Something like that, and we're ready to go. I've got my piece of 5160 spring steel. Um, kind of down on my stock on 5160. I just happen to have this big chunk, which is a lot to forge out, but we have the power hammer, and we'll be using that. So. Without further ado, let us begin. I'll get this in the forge and we'll start hammering. Here we go. So my first step is to knock back the corners. I do this on most of the blades that I'm working on is that most, pretty much all blade shapes have a point on this um, end of it there. So I always like to knock back my corners and let that middle part be the leading edge. Still a de depression on the end there, and I want to knock the steel back behind that on the corner. So, a little ways to go yet. Okay, finally, a lot of effort, but I've got that rounded over there so that the middle is the leading point there. Uh, the reason I'm doing that whole thing is if I just start forging out a bar like this, the edges or corners are gonna move faster than the center and what you'll get is called bird beaking. So it, the piece is gonna come in like this and you get this kind of bird beak thing. So there'll be a fissure at the end or the tip, which is what you do not want on a sword. You don't want that to be a weak point. So by doing that, we got moving it back this way, we're gonna have our point coming out nice solid steel there and no worries about any sort of fissure at the point there. That's the starting uh, procedure and now we'll actually get on the power hammer and start drawing this out faster. Okay, I'm chopping it off because it is a, started out with a giant unwieldy piece. I still am going to have much more steel than I need, but I've just generally roughed out some of the features on this. Chop away the excess here and should be a little easier for me to manage. That's a couple pounds right there. Okay, let me grab my template. So by way of comparison, you can see I've got this thing is probably about five inches shorter than the finish length is gonna be. But there is still shit loads of mass in here. This is quite thick. Um, it's quite a bit of material to move. So this is gonna get longer. I think I've probably got excess material, but I always like to leave myself um, more rather than less. So next step is I'm just gonna let things cool off here go back to the tip and then just start thinning um, It out trying to get it closer to the finished thickness 
and also um, getting the profile, the width, the shape, and everything, and working my way back. As I do that, I would be pushing the steel, all right, like it would be growing forward, so this will be lengthening, and then I'll be able to determine what the actual shape is back here. At this point, it's just kind of guessing because I don't know um, which way it's all gonna grow, how much longer it's going to get exactly before I stop forging, so. That's it, we'll take a little break, let this thing cool off and come back and start forging again. All right, so you can see I'm starting the uh, more refined shaping, still a rough shape here, but I'm making it wider than the finished product there. Um, and there's still more thickness in here than uh, is what we need here. So I'm gonna do a pass and kind of come back to here and then I'll probably start at the tip again and draw it out one more time to get um, something closer to the appropriate thinness uh, before I go into the grinding phases. Otherwise, I'm just doing a lot of stock removal and that's not really what I want to do. So, uh, yeah, here we go. All right, so I did a pass here. I uh, didn't get into this area here, but I was able to draw this out. Still need some more thinning out, but I just wanted to get a little bit of scale coming out the bottom there. You can see we're approaching the final shape, but there's still a lot of thickness, so it's gonna grow this way more. I'm just gonna let everything cool off and then go back to the tip and work my way back. That should be my final um, forging pass and then we'll get into this area and then I'll have to flip around and do the fine tuning on the other side. So, uh, I don't know, maybe half done the forging at this point.
I think I've got it. I've got it rough forged to shape from here. I am going to get on the grinder and start profiling um, things, getting it to the actual size there. But I think it's pretty good as far as sizing. Quite a bit of thickness in the middle that will come out. We can grind that out. But I just wanted it to grow to the appropriate length. And I think I have nailed that all down as far as what's going on for the handle. Looks about right. So I might have to get back on the forge and, and forge out the tang after I start grinding things out. We'll see how that goes, but I'm um, just gonna let it cool off and then on to the grinder. All right, I am ready to begin the long grinding process. First step will be profiling the blade. So I'm gonna take my rough form shape here and do the perimeter and smooth it out and just keep fitting it on my template to try to match that as accurately as possible. I won't be totally married to um, what I've drawn on the template and if, if things seem to present themselves here I, I will go with the flow. So let's do it. All right, with profiling done, now I'm ready to start grinding in the bevels. And I have quite a bit of meat to remove here. Um, so there's gonna be a fair bit of grinding. And basically what I do, um, the strategy is to come in at a pretty, uh, I don't know, flat, or um, like a 45-ish type angle, and then flatten out from there. Um, and what I wanna do is start removing meat away from the outer edge and then kind of flatten it down till I get my um, proper angle. And then from that, once I've got that kind of locked into my brain, I can just kind of maintain that and do all the bevels and start working my way towards the center line. Okay, about an hour and a bit of grinding and I've got it roughed out as far as the bevels there. Um, my edge is, I don't know, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. It um, varies a little bit. So I've basically established the geometry now. What I need to do is go back in and refine that whole thing and just try to even things out um, and get my center line to be a nice um, centered an even line and my edges to be a consistent thickness. Also trying to remove um, overall thickness, this thing is quite, still quite thick. So there's quite a bit of material that is still coming out. Well, it's, um, it's not that much, but it, 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 it takes, it's tricky to get that little bit out and get this thing actually light enough. So uh, I just put a fresh belt on. I just find it's easier to swap these out, the 36 grits. Um, I did my rough hogging and the scale kind of uh, chews it up. Uh, it was glazing over a little bit. So I'm going to go with a fresh belt, cut in my lines again and see if I can get this um, to uh, the appropriate grinding stage and then we will be annealing it. All right, so a uh, couple hours of grinding. I've got it roughed around my blade geometry, as they say. Um, it has been established here. It's still quite... Um, stiff and weighing in at just about two pounds right now um, which is what I would like to be my finished weight or slightly under with all the the hilt and everything like that so probably a good half inch of steel I still want to remove from this uh, but my day is drawing to a close and it's time for me to anneal this so I'm going to put it into my heat treating oven bring it up to 1455 Fahrenheit the critical temperature um, just leave it there for a couple minutes and then let it drop slowly overnight so over the course of about eight or nine hours we'll let it cool off slowly and that is going to relax this piece of steel get rid of all the stresses um, from the forging and grinding and what have you um, then we will come back and do some more grinding get the um, things cleaned up really nicely and get ready for the actual heat treat 
So still a long way to go. We're less than halfway on this sword. Maybe, <laughs> ooh, maybe a third of the way. So just follow me over here to the heat treating oven, which I've already got. All right, so into the oven. And just standing it up on its little stands there. And that is already 400 degrees. So my fingers are cooking. And we'll close that up, leave it overnight. That's it. See you tomorrow. Day two, I vanilled the sword and just brought it out of the oven. And now um, it should be totally relaxed and stress free. I took it up to 1450, 1455 Fahrenheit um, and then let it cool off slowly overnight. So now this thing is dead soft, but it's got um, hard scale on the outer surface here. So I'm gonna get back on the grinder here, do a little bit more grinding, um, just kind of cut through that scale. And I want to remove a little bit of thickness at the tip here. I'm trying to work on my distal taper where I want it to be thickest here and taper slightly towards um, the tip. And so I've got quite a bit of meat still in the thickness right here. So I need to take that down a bit. Once I've got that down, I'm going to um, get off the grinder and get a file and true up my lines with the file. I like to um, get in nice and slow with that and see if I can sharpen up my lines um, in that fashion. Since I'm not a total expert on the knife grinder, I've been using one for 25 years, but I just, I don't use it often enough to be a total pro on it. Um, and it, I, I find that sometimes slowing down the file really helps get things um, exactly where you need them. So anyway, back on the grinder. All right, so I uh, finished the grinding. Now I'm gonna get on to the filing. We're gonna slow things down here and uh, get my lines cleaned up. I've got a two by four in a vise. I set this sword upon the two by four and then with a clamp, I'm gonna clamp it down. And hopefully one clamp will be enough to hold it. And now I'm going to take a bastard cut file and draw file basically back and forth here and I'm really working on cutting my getting my center ridge sharpened up and then filing out towards the edges so this is going to take a little while All right, so the filing is done. That got me the shaping that I needed. I cut in my uh, blade geometry, as they like to say, and also got rid of the uh, sideways scratches from the 36 grit belt. So now I have longitudinal, longitudinal scratches running this way, the file marks, but it's clean enough now to do the heat treat. Um, before I did that, I drilled two holes for the handle pins. Um, you want to drill those before you harden it because uh, you're not going to be able to drill it afterwards. So uh, let's get the oven heating up and we will do the hardening step and then the tempering. All right, so I just want to throw this on the scale. So prior to hardening here, just the blade, we're coming at a just over a pound and a half, which is perfect. Um, I'm hoping that my hilt material handle and cross guard pommel bit and everything like that will come in at about half a pound. I'd like this thing to clock in at about two pounds. There is going to be a little bit of material removed off the blade yet, but not an appreciable amount to uh, change the weight. So right now this is sitting pretty good.
I think I'm drinking too much coffee. No wonder I'm so jittery. All right, the blade is now up to critical temperature. I am going to pull it out and quench. go straight down into the oil. I don't go side to side. That can cause cavitation, which will warp the blade. This blade is fairly thin. I'm guessing there's gonna be some warpage anyway. So I'm just putting it down. Leave it in there for several seconds. And now pull it forth. Slight bit of warping, but I think we can take that out in the tempering step. I'd rather not flex it right now. The last time I did that, things went badly, so I think I'm just going to leave well enough alone. So there we go. I get a double file. Just run it across here, and yeah, it is skating off there, so I think we're good and hard. So we'll let that cool off. Now we're going to let our oven cool off for a couple hours to get it down to tempering temperature and then it'll go back in the oven for the tempering, first phase of tempering. All right, so while we're waiting for the oven to cool down enough to temper the blade, I'm gonna start working on the fittings for the uh, hilt here, and I'm using bronze, I've got silicone bronze here, and I'm doing a piece here for the quillions, if you will, of the guard, and then um, for the butt cap or pommel, um, this will be wood, this will be wood, this will be wood slabs. You'll see how that all goes together. But right now I'm just getting the metal bits um, roughed out. So I'll get this cut out and grind, ground smooth and everything and then start laying out for the holes and start doing some drilling and stuff like that. The time has come for tempering. We've got a bit of a curvature. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. It's got a warp. The warp is warped. And now I'm going to clamp it, warp being up like that, onto this bar here, and see if that will bring it down during the tempering process. We've got the oven at 500. I want to go for a pretty springy temper on this. Now, I just want to be careful I don't crack anything here. This is still, the blade has been hardened, so it's in a very brittle state right now. It's hard, but it's not tough, which is why we are tempering. I'm assuming most of you YouTube viewers are going to be savvy enough to understand the whole process of hardening and tempering, but who knows. So in the oven for two hours, we'll do one cycle, check it for straightness, and then we'll do a second cycle where you may have to reclamp it or reposition the clamps to you get it. God damn it. Lost a clamp. I've uh, drilled out a series of holes here for the quillion, and now what I'm going to do is grind that out, and I'm going to use my tiny little die grinder for that. Uh, this is kind of a tedious and boring job, but uh, it needs to be done. Okay, I have found this little piece of wood in my uh, collection of exotic woods. This is Jatoba wood, which is a tropical hardwood, which is known for its strength and toughness, which I think is gonna be ideal. And it's not super heavy like Coca Bolo, so I'm trying to keep weight down. Um, anyway, I think this piece is just big enough to do what I wanna do, which is, there is going to be a separate piece which will be the wood pommel here. So imagining it coming across like that. And then there will be a quillion piece, a separate one that will slide on, which will be that there. Then there will be two handle slabs, so it'll be a slab handle there 
um, bracketed by these two slide on pieces of wood. And I think in laying things out here and doing my calculations, if I do this very strategic cut here, cut here, here, and then slice it in half, I will have just enough to make all these things happen so I better not screw up. So off to the bandsaw. Day three, and we are deep into this sword project here. Um, all the heat treating is done, and we're ready to move on to the finishing touches now. So I've got it uh, strapped down to my uh, two by four, and I'm ready to start hand sanding. And for that, I am using uh, an 80 grit emery cloth and um, very aggressive. This is a high-end one and works quite well. So what I do is wrap it in a block and like so. And then with a shot of WD, using that, this is wet dry sandpaper, but instead of using water, I use um, WD-40 so it doesn't rust up the blade and it is a great lubricant. So, actually what, what I'm first doing here now is I'm removing the oil scale from our heat treating process the, um, when we quenched it in oil for our first quench to harden it, um, put this uh, scale on there, and then our two subsequent steps of tempering at about 500 degrees uh, did not remove that scale. So what I'm gonna do right now is actually remove that and then I'm gonna do a last um, heat treating step in that I'm gonna use a torch to blue the spine. But I, first I need to shine up my steel so I can see the temper colors. Okay, and there we have it. So this just gives an extra springiness along the um, center ridge of the sword here and into the tang um, and leaves the edges slightly harder. I had or I'd tempered them at around 500, um, looking for a brown color in that. So I want something that ha can hold an edge, but is more focused on being flexible. Um, which is what I'm going for with this sword. Incidentally, when we go back to the Greek hoplite swords, we were early in the Iron Age at this point in time, um, and the swords, as the Iron Age implies, were made out of iron, not steel. So not really a carburized uh, thing at all, and no amount of heat treating done with them. Um, and I think in a future video, I'll do an actual iron sword um, that we can play with and kind of show how it actually responds. And I chose not to go historically accurate with the iron sword, but to, to actually go with this spring steel sword to have something that is going to be, at the end of the day, functional for my fantasy hoplite suit. So something that I'm, I could feel confident using and wielding against my uh, foe. So let's get back to sanding.
All right, about two and a half hours of the 80 grit sanding and I've now got all the major scratches out and basically I've got both sides of the blade quite pretty. And now I am switching to 150. Um, from there, I'm going to go to 240. Um, this is gonna happen quicker now because I've removed all the scratches that were going in different directions, the file marks and all that deep stuff and the 36 grit, which are deep scratches. So um, this step, the 150 should go fairly quickly and then the 240 um, as well very um, quickly, but just get up to a finer finish, but I'm just gonna leave it at the 240. I'm not going for mirror finish. Um, if you've been watching my videos, you know that's not really my style. And for an Iron Age sword, I like the aesthetic of it being looking a little flatter, a little um, more, I don't know, gray, um, rustic, if you will. So I might even blue it. I don't know, whether I'll see when I get to that, I might just blue the blade and, and, and go that route. So anyway, a little bit more sanding and then uh, we can get into working on the hilt. One fifty done. Two forty. This is our final uh, pass. Exciting. Hand sanding is a bitch, man. It takes forever. I do like it. It's kind of a bit of a you know spirit journey part of get you know bonding with your sword and all that, but uh, it goes on and on. So. I think 240 is plenty for the finish that I am happy with. All right, so I'm just getting this cleaned up a little bit. I uh, didn't show you this, but I came in with the angle grinder like this, and I did a little trough in here. That helps when you put the slabs on that the outside edge is your leading edge. Also gives the epoxy a little trough in which to collect in there. So I've done that on either side. It helped lighten things up ever so slightly as well. Um, so my blade here at about a pound and a half. Now I want to do about a half a pound of the hilt. Um, speaking of which, moving to this piece now. So I'm gonna get, start getting in there with the file and start working this piece up the hilt here. Incidentally, I always like to do a really um, gentle radius at the junction here. I don't like uh, blades that have a really sharp um, 90 degree undercut like that. That's a real weak point with the harmonic vibrations in a sword and that's where they tend to break off if you do that sort of thing. So I think I might go a little overkill, but I, I really like to do um, this transitioning into there so it makes a very strong transition point from blade into hilt. So just makes it a little um, more complex to get my quillions fitted in there. But here we go. All right, so I've got 
a chunk of wood and I put a little groove in there and that's coming onto here like so. It's a pressure fit, which is good. And now um, what I want to do is grind these two in tandem to get them shaped. Some time has elapsed and we are finally back to finish this sword off while well, you were gone and I can't put everything on video just the complication of having my video guy here and when I'm able to do some of this stuff doesn't always work out. So anyway, what I have done in the meantime is epoxy on my various pieces of wood. Um, the process went something like this. I slid on the uh, quillion, if you call it that, uh, and then the wooden quillion part with some epoxy on there, got that slid into place. Then I put on my two slabs and copper pins into that. They were clamped on and epoxy and everything. Once that's set up, then I put on the pommel, the wood pommel part with epoxy. I got some um, wooden uh, splinters driven in there to fill up the holes and everything like that. And then I put the bronze piece on and then with a small torch, uh, heated up the end and peened it over to draw everything together while the epoxy was still wet that was very smelly and uh, basically I've got this whole thing is now one solid piece with no vibration in it so a good solid sword on there um, I've done all the grinding up to this point on the wood just on the grinder and it is still fairly rough and the handle is somewhat blocky so doesn't fit uh, perfectly in the hand. So what I need to do now is to tone off some of these sharp areas. Also, um, where my thumb comes up here, I realize I need to radius this a little bit more so that everything just nestles in there nicely and nothing is um, pushing against your hand when you're swinging the sword. You want a nice, comfortable, ergonomic grip. So I'm going to put it into the vise here and grab a rasp. So I've made quite a few swords in my career, probably, I don't know, say a couple dozen, 25, 30, something like that. And I've gotten to the point where I've got out of my system making all the really flashy um, fantasy swords, the Excalibur style 
um, something that has a real, you know, crazy aesthetic or something like that. And now I'm in a phase where I really just want to make, when I'm making a sword, I want a good working, a working man's sword, so to speak. So um, I'm very much more into the ergonomics and I've always really, again and again, I'm drawn to the earlier swords, the uh, two foot blade, um, just something about that type of sword feels really good when you hold it in the fist. It just feels like you could do some real damage with it. Um, and it's, I'm now just really into just making a um, sword without any real flash or glitter. I just want something that really does the job. And I think this is a perfect instance here um, for the Greek hoplite sword where it's, it's basically your sidearm, um, your secondary weapon and everything. And it wasn't really expected to be a major showpiece. So I'm just trying to make this thing look like it is a good working sword. It's only got a 200 grit finish on the blade. Um, on the handle itself here, I'm not going to be embellishing it in any way other than what it is. I'll be staining the wood, but I'm going to leave the wood fairly rough. I also like that as a nice positive grip. Um, like my hammer handles, I like to have um, a little bit of standing uh, grain there to be able to grip into. I don't want it to be too smooth and that would get slippery when you've got blood or sweat on your hand. So that's kind of where I'm going with the look on this sword. And so far, I'm quite pleased with the effect. So I'll do a little bit more finishing work here. And then I'll just put some stain on the wood and we'll call it a day. See that? Cut. <laughs> all right, so it stood up quite well to the chopping test. The edge is all still very good here, and none of the handle stuff loosened off during that impact there. So I'm feeling pretty good about the overall sturdiness of this. And we've got some good flexibility in this blade. Uh, so. I was waited to stain the handle because I wanted to do this without getting my hand all stained up. So let's go back in, stain the handle, and we are done. I am using Sedona Red as my stain. It looks quite lovely. We'll let that dry for an hour and uh, come back and see what it looks like and we'll do the final beauty shots maybe I'll actually clean up the blade all right there we have it finally sword is done you can see the handle the stain came out quite nice I think it's a fetching blade all told so of course this leads us to our next video which is the scabbard <sighs> and on and on it goes so I'm gonna have to make a scabbard for this and then, of course, we have the spear, and I have a couple other metal bits to do. So we're getting closer, folks. I'm glad you're sticking around. Um, this one was a big one doing the sword, um, but I'm happy to have this done. It was fun to make a sword again. Haven't done that for a while, so I'm pretty happy with this. I'm, I'm quite pumped. The suit is coming together. So that's it for today. Back out. See ya!